Hello again. Today we're back at the same spot as the last couple of videos, and I've got some history for you guys. These two items I have in front of me are slide rules. Slide rules are a computational device that bridges the gap between the major usage of logarithmic tables in the backs of textbooks and, well, a computational book that is just log tables, and pocket calculators. The slide rule saw a lot of use through the mid-20th century when manufacturing technology was good enough to make these things on a large scale and uh, give them reasonable accuracy to do computations, multiplication, division, uh, square roots, squares, cube roots, trig functions to three or so significant figures. And you get all of this in a convenient belt-carryable package. It uh, kind of hangs down like a scabbard for a sword, if you will. Uh, you can see I wore this one for a little bit and actually damaged the old leather. This one was my grandpa's. Uh, my grandpa's. Uh, he's got some writing in there to help identify it as his. And it comes in this nice orange-ish leather-colored case. Now, his slide rule is a pretty traditional slide rule, one of the... Uh, more budget options. This one is made of some kind of like Bakelite esque plastic. It's got the pretty standard scales on there. Let's see K A B T S R T S D. On the other side, it'll have a C and a D. Those are the scales that I actually know how to use. The other ones can do kind of weird things like circle arcs and whatnot, but trig functions, squares, square roots, uh, cubes, cube roots. Normal multiplication and division is the only thing I've ever used these for on a couple select physics quizzes in high school. Uh, also makes a great straight edge. I know my grandpa used to tell me stories about how he would write the uh, formulas to his exams on the edge of that slide rule, and there's not a lot of space there, but, I mean, heck, if you wrote an erasable marker, you could probably fit quite a bit of stuff there, which is pretty different from what you could try to fit on any kind of ruler. Like, you're not writing on this guy right here. You're right on the front of that. No, maybe on the back. Or some cooler rulers. In the Space Systems Lab, Penn State, giving these away. Not anymore, they ran out. Don't go there now. Whole school's closed. We're all going to Zoom, don't you know? Uh, th this is pretty cool. This is from Texas Instruments. It's a PCB ruler and it's got all kinds of common package sizes. Now, before I get too far on a tangent, the only thing I'm going to say about this these guys right here. See that? On the left, <laughs> on the left is, uh, uh, of those labels is US, Imperial. And on the right of those labels is metric. 0402 metric is not the same as 0402 Imperial. Do not make that mistake. Because 0402 metric is in a 1005 or something close to, it's, it's tiny. You're not going to be able to solder it. You can't even see it. So, be very careful. Mm. That's a cool ruler if you can get TI to send them to you. You get them with bulk orders. Now back on back on task, the difference between these two slide rules that I'm going to have here is one of them is the traditional, and the other is what they call a verse log. So on the traditional, they're going to have that A and that B scale, and those are used for squares and square roots. And the verse log will not have those. So if we take a look at the verse log. This one is made by a Japanese company called Hemi and Post. Specifically, this slide rule is a model Hemian Post 1460 Versalog. And this will have very similar scales, except that there's no A or B, and instead there's an R1 and R2. That's a root one and root two. And those allow you to compete, compute square roots quite a bit more accurately in some cases than on the traditional slide rule, like this one made by Kiflin and Esser. Now, uh, one other note, Hemian Post was a company in Japan that was pretty much to my understanding, they mostly made slide rules, and they made them out of bamboo because bamboo was very common and a great material for slide, slide rules because of what I was told, if the camera will focus, there's pores in bamboo, and there, you'll see kind of little dots. You can see it in that part right there. Little dots in the wood. The bamboo holds liquid uh, and stays moist over time so that this will slide all right, and then you can use some wood oils and get good movement of a slide rule like this here. The, the plastic Bakelite-esque material, I'm not sure if it actually is Bakelite, but I don't think it actually is because it hasn't shattered the couple times I've dropped it. This slides against itself pretty well, but you wouldn't use wood oil. You could use some other kind of lubricant, or this one is actually made pretty loose, so I don't, I don't think you really need anything there. Um, but, I mean, post, they, they made slide rules. 
That was their thing. Uh, Kiflin Esser is a scientific instruments company, and for a long time they made only surveying equipment, and that's pretty much what they make today. When I see the uh, the surveying students out uh, on Old Main Lawn, they'll have Kiflin Esser equipment on top of their tripods when they're doing their laser floodplain mapping or whatever that is that they do sometimes. Uh, but for a brief period, mid twentieth century. These guys were a very popular manufacturer, and lots of people got these slide rules because they were significantly cheaper than the bamboo counterparts from, I mean, Post or other companies. Uh, like, I think Picket made one, and they're infamous for that yellow slide rule. There's a couple apps out there on Android or whatnot, and those will simulate the yellow pickets. So, without further ado... Uh, if you don't know, slide rules work by logarithmic addition to achieve multiplication and division. So there's a property with logarithms. If you take the log of A and the log of B and you add them together, you get the log of A times B. So what you have is the C and the D scale are a logarithmic scale from 1 to 10 across the whole rule. If you line them both up to each other, you're adding the log of 1 plus the log of 1 is, you know, the log of 1 times 1 is 1. The log of 2 plus the log of 1 is the log of 2 times 1 is log of 2. Now... If you slide this so that the 1 and the 2 line up there, then you're multiplying by 2. So that's log of 1 plus log of 2 is log of 2. And then if we look at the log of uh, 2, see the 2 and the 4 there? There we go, get that centered. The log of 2 plus the log of 2 is the log of 2 times 2 is the log of 4. We can do the same thing in reverse. You just slide it the other way. And then you see that the log of 2 minus the log of 1 is... Uh, excuse me, the log of 1 minus the log of 2 is uh, log of 1. I got that right? Do, do, do. Yes. Okay, so we're, we're dividing by 2, and then 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, if you end up off the scale, like you want to do uh, 16 divided by 2 is 8, you see that we stop at 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5, you just add, or rather, multiply by 10. How do you multiply by 10? You take the anchor point here, which is on this one, at the left edge of the scale, and we say this result is off the scale, and we take the anchor point and move it to the top one. So we want 20 divided by 2 to be 10. And then we look for 16, which will be read as 1.6 off C, down, and that'll be 8 on the, on the D scale there. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. So you can do a similar thing for multiplication if it's off the scale. Uh, but that's the gist of how a slide rule works. Now, to do squares and square roots, we take that same property and we just double its effects. So we take, we create an A and a B scale for squares and square roots, and the A and the B scale are two C or D scales in the same spacing as one C or D scale. So it's from 1 to 10 to the midpoint, and then 1 to 10 from middle to the other end. So then if I want to do squares, I just pick the 2 on the D square and add out the D scale, and then I read up to the A scale, and I see that that's 4. Um, and then if I want to square 3, I do the same thing. I go 3, and I read up to the, the A scale, and I see it's 9. 3 squared is 9. Cool. Now, if I want to do square roots, I do it in reverse. I'm reading 9 from the A, square, the A scale, and I see that the square root of 9 is 3. But what if I wanted to do the square root of 90? Um, well, the square root of 90 is not 30. The square root of 90 is 3 times the square root of 10. So I have to read from the other half of that scale and I line up the 90, because the other half of that scale is from 10 to 100, and I see that the square root of 90 is hmm, 9 point, like 5-ish, thereabouts, and that makes sense because 9 squared is 81 and 10 squared is 100. So it's somewhere in between 9 and 8. Now, again, the reason for that is just the square root of 10 versus square root of 100. Square root of 10 is 3.1622, and square root of 100 is 10. And so every other times 10 in the square root, you get this factor of root 10 multiplying in to give you that times 3.1622 times 10 to the whatever in your result. So you have to pick, according to where that square root of 10 is going to fall, which scale to use in order to do square root. Now, on a verse log, you don't have an A and a B scale. Instead, you have that R1 and R2. And to do a square root... Uh, you, you do a very similar thing. So on the D scale, you find what you want to take the square root of. So if it were 4, we find 4 on the D scale. And then we read down onto the appropriate root scale, which in this case is going to be the root 1. And we see that the result is 2. 
Um, but what the other thing is cool is we don't have to move this cursor, and we're also staring at the square root of 40, which is 5, 6.32-ish, 6.32-ish, some, somewhere about 6.3, a little over. Uh, and that, that makes sense because 6 squared is 36, and uh, 7 squared is 49, so somewhere in the middle. Cool. Uh, now, the reason to do this is to get a little more accuracy in some cases, and I've got a pre-done case where that is true for one of these. So the square root of 13 from a calculator or Wolfram Alpha or whatever is 3.6056. If we do that on the Versalog scale, now 13 would be off the edge, right, because it stops at 10. So we get 1.3, we remember that we're multiplying by a 10, which means that we're going to have a root 10 in our answer. So, which, so we're going to use the R2 scale, not the R1 scale, because the square root of 13 is certainly not 1.1. That doesn't make any sense, or thereabouts. So the R2 scale starts at 3 here, 3.2, 3.3, 4, 5, 6. And if you can zoom in, we'll see that we're in between that first tick of the 6 and the 0 tick of the 6. So 3.605-ish. 3.605 looks a little over 3.606, which is you know four significant figures of precision on that square root. But if we do the same calculation from the A and the B scale, we know we'll be on the uh, right half here because we got that factor of 10 in there and we line up the 13 and then we read down to the D scale we see 3.60 well it's hard to tell in there because that that looks a little over 3.61 to me because those ticks in between 3.5 3.6 3.7 and so on and so on are 0.2 not 0.1 like they are on the R1 scale so you can get a little bit more uh, accurate reading for the square root on the verse log in this case than the other one. But I also did the other example, which is square root of 130. And on this scale, if we go to 1.3 times 100, which will place us on the left scale here, and we read that down, we can see 1.14 times 10, so 11.4. And I, I really can't tell beyond that precision. And the actual result is 11.4018. If I do the same calculation on the Versalog scale, just give me a second here, 1.3, and we read down, we'll be reading on the R1 scale, and we see 11.4, well, we can see it's over, but we're really not telling too much more. We got 11.4, and it's a little over that 11.4, which is useful information. We know it's... You know, this guy gives us less information, but you'd have to take an educated guess there. So, was the verse log scale worth it back in the day for that extra one significant figure that you might get in your square roots? Maybe. I mean, it doesn't have it doesn't have the A or B scale, so it's more difficult to do squares. You might have to do it by manual multiplication or just memorize it. There might be a scale on here that I don't know how to use that could allow you to do that still. But the way I know how to do squares involves the A and the B scale, and you lose that by going to the Versalog. The bamboo construction is certainly better. You can see Hemi made in Japan there. That'll focus. And I got post on the other half. Still. Interesting. I got the model number stamped on the side. So is the root scale worth it? You be the judge. See you next time.